Yo, what up, people? Smith, the motherfucking are here today, of course, to finally give you guys White Album 2, Episode 6, motherfucking review. I know, I know, I know. It's been a while, and there are probably going to be complications. I'll make a video about it later. But anyway, White Album 2, motherfucking review. Fuck it. Anyway, let's just get the shit on. So this week's episode was actually pretty interesting. Okay, find, we find out the whole idea is like about to derail. Because we got this dude over here, he can't learn the fucking song, fucking Kitahara, where you at, bro? You need to learn this fucking song. You know, he needs to be able to play. And then we got Tayuma and her fucking illness, and we got Ogaso and her stage fright. And so everything's just like starting to fall apart at the last moment. But there's becomes like this little hope. Because basically throughout the episode, it was basically in the beginning, Kitahara is taking care of Tayuma. She, apparently she just overexhausted herself. It wasn't like some type of crazy ass illness. So that, that's pretty nice to know. You know, she isn't about to die or nothing like that. And we meet her mom and we go through this whole this whole situation where they're getting, they're, they're developing this stronger bond. And he's like, you know, I'd only do this for you. And like, you know, he wouldn't stay home and take care of just anybody apparently and... You don't know if he's being nice or serious or not, but, you know, she's getting blushed, and in her room, she eats food, and it's, this is a pretty, you know, sort of situation. It's just starting to escalate their friendship to a level. That's what it's doing right now. And besides that, of course, Kitahara, Tayuma and Kitahara, they couldn't make it to rehearsal, which now, now it turns out that two days... They got two days before this motherfucker. Oh, two days. Two. Ain't that some shit. So, we're in crunch time. We might see it next week's episode. Like, we might see them play. And then I'm wondering what it's going to do after that. Like, what are they going to do after that? Because if they already played, then... I don't know. What are they going to do after that? Maybe a bigger show or something like that? Because maybe they're going to do really good and then get discovered. I, I don't know. I don't. But we'll have to see. And, of course, Ogaso, she's up there, and apparently she couldn't say anything, and rehearsal was basically, like, a total failure. Nobody was there. Ogaso, she couldn't sing. And we find out it was because, you know, she can only sing when she's with her friend. You know, she doesn't just want to sing in front of these people without that support behind her, and so it's understandable. And, uh, sorry, God, some funny-ass shit happened this episode. Let's let's get back on with Kitara and Tayuma for a minute. Now, basically, she's she's helping him play. Like she's listening. She's on the futon. She's almost better. She's at like, she's she's near, but she's like a point away in Celsius from being not sick anymore. And he just is playing it with some fucking headphones on, and he, you you can hear him. And apparently, it seems like he got it. <clears throat> and then it proceeds on to the next day. One day, and there's like this little festival going on, and there was a cafe. And this is gonna bring up, you know what? Fuck it, why not? This is this is talk about right now. You don't see that in, in American. No, no, no. Oh no, fuck that. Mm -mm. You don't see that shit. Like no joke. All through my middle school year, there were no fucking festivals. I didn't see that shit. You know, this is a <sighs> fucking Japan is lucky. I swear to God, America. Mm. We had one talent show. All my one middle school. Hell no, I didn't go in that shit. Fuck that. But I remember, um, all I remember is because the two things would fuck, it's story time. Fuck, I don't give a fuck. It's story time right now. Okay, so, one was one of my teachers impersonating I, Mr. T. No joke, like rapping and stuff as Mr. T and doing Ice Ice Baby and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah. and he's so white. It was so funny. I don't care, I don't care. And then the second one is something I'll never forget, which just showed me what the fuck I had to look forward to, especially in high school. Basically, <sighs> scoop a girl. <sighs> Basically, some girls were dancing to the song Disco Stick. You know, fuck, fuck, like legit. I, I don't know why, but that's the one thing that I really remember. Because it was a like, yo, like no. No. Like, I was a boy and all that, but no, fuck that. Like, it was just fucking ridiculously over sexy for middle school. I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? Shit? No, no, get the fuck out of here. No. It was the worst thing ever. I don't care. Yeah, you guys get the gist. That, that's how it, 
sort of is. Like in Japan, they got all these, you know, their school system seems much different from America's. It really does. It makes me kind of wish I went to school there, because that would have been the funnest shit ever. Like, it would have been hard as shit, and I would probably failed multiple times. But fuck it. I would be American. Fuck it. Why not? Fuck it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But no, no, no. The school system in America. <sighs> yeah, yeah. That explains it. And so, basically, um, Culture Festival. And this is the funniest. Oh, my. This is no joke. The funniest shit of the episode. I don't know why, but it was hilarious as shit. Basically, Kit Tahar goes in the classroom I got over so do I look good and all this shit. And I was like, oh my god, man. And then he just walks into the room and all of a sudden it's just like dead silence. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And Edward just staring at these two as he, oh, before that, before that, this motherfucker made a joke. And he was like, get the fuck out of the way, Lo. And I was like, what the fuck? Because he was like, do I look good? And she's like, I'm going to get changed. And I was like, it was, a, it was a nice, funny moment. I was like, get out of my line of sight, you're blocking Olga. So I'm like, damn. That was, that was mad. That was... Mm, fuck it. Basically, they start talking. And this is like, this a scene. No joke, had these blue tint moments and like, shining. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, and it was the funniest shit. Because everybody was just like, looking at these motherfuckers. And they didn't even like, notice. They were in their own little world. And it was like, one of those things where it's like, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna get together. Like, it was just one of those things where, like, damn, like, the chemistry, like, the room, the mood in the room just changed. I'm like, damn. Then he just grabs your hand and runs out, and it's, oh my god. Everybody's just like, oh my god, what the fuck just happened? And you just see, like, this group of guys just go chasing after Oka, so I'm just like, oh my god. Like, after him. And it was weird, and I'm like, oh my god. Basically, they're on the train, and this is where it escalated. They're on the fucking train, and you see fucking scene after scene after scene of just motherfuckers staring. I was like, yo, like, don't you guys know what personal space is? Like, yo, like, mind your own business, but no, every motherfucker on the train was looking at these two. I'm just like, oh my god. Like, I did not expect that. I was like, yo, hell no. I was at my ass. I was like, hell no. These motherfuckers, they're just so eavesdropping. Like, the train was dead silent. I'm like, Basically, she's hiding because she doesn't want to feel embarrassed, and she's holding on to him, talking about how his broad shoulders and all this and that, and you're frail and you're weak, but your broad shoulders. And I'm just like, okay, fuck it. And then they, it ends up that they go to, to Yuma's, and there's one day left to the concert, and they want to perform a third song. And this one is one that Kitahara wrote himself. Oh, my God. And she's reading through it, and... Basically, we find out that he joined the music club because he wanted to write music because he did, he wasn't really good with the guitar. His friend was good with the guitar, and he was writing music, but then he decided to pick up the guitar. And so now they're going to try and learn this third song because he nailed the second one, and he got he believes he got it down. And so now this third song they're going to practice, and tomorrow is, of course, the main event. So let's see how they do. And... It seems like the song, it went through some stuff with Tayuma and Okuso's reading it and she's just like, and she's just like shocked and I'm just like, what was going on with the song? Because she read a couple of, of the lyrics and they were like in the subtitles and shit. But, I just couldn't piece together what it was about. Because it seemed like emotional, kind of like love. It was weird. We'll have to see how it's sung and what the beat is and the music behind it. But as I saw it, this song might have had something to do with somebody. Like, it could have been, I don't know, and I don't want to just fucking say that. Because there's some things you just can't fucking just, you know, just flew down and be like, yo, this is what's going on. Like, no, I can't, I can't even try to say that. But I'm just wondering exactly what was on it. What is in this song that Ogiso noticed that, you know, Tayuma also noticed, and she's just looking at her like, yeah, acceptance, like, what's going on? And I'm wondering, what if this was is a song about Ogaso? What if? I, I don't see that happening, but still, there's a possibility. We'll have to see. But either way, Smithers to my fucking art. This week's episode right here. What? 9 out of 10. It was a good episode. 
a lot of progression. It was it was funny and like all these people and this whole tension between these two motherfuckers, Kitahara and Oso, is off the charts. To Yumi, you're falling behind. She kind of is. I don't know though, because theirs is much more of a nice, but every time Kitahara and Chorus Okuso, they fucking talk. The fucking room goes silent. Just everybody's staring. I was like, oh my god, hell no. I think, damn. Yeah, some some might happen there. I'm seeing that. Because also, Tanyuma, she's also worried about Okuso, because now they're like rivals, in a sense. Like, she's acknowledged that she likes him. Because she says, with a blush face on, when he's playing his song and he can't hear, like, so you won't go out with Ogazo. And in it was something like that. Maybe it was more, like, directly, like, so you're not going to, you and Ogazo aren't going to go out. Shit like that. But either way, it just showed that Tayuma, she had a little bit of doubt, but she also might, yeah. It's a little bit of, Reassurance that, yeah, she likes this motherfucker. So does Ogaso. And so it's reiterating this whole fucking two girls, one guy, which he's going to pick. And so it's just reiterating that. And so I'm waiting to see how it goes. And I'm waiting to see what this nigga sounds, when the, what this nigga's song sounds like. And, of course, the big one, of course, how they do at the concert. Do you, bro? Good episode this week, and overall, I'll see you guys next time. So smash my fucking arm. Peace the fuck out.